yeah we're done so we'll be referring uh, philips already we had this discussion right so you can just follow our update group or uh, you can just uh, enroll to our uh, i mean uh, to our mail so that you can just uh, get regular updates so we'll be referring Philips in the 11th edition or the any latest edition if available. So I'm uh, referring this latest one, uh, page 257, right? So today we're going to have a discussion on dentin bonding agent. So first of all, a very good evening. Hi, everyone. Glad to hear that Abhishek likes this music. Okay. Yes, Nidhi. You should have music in Operation Theater as well. Okay, so we'll just go through the textbook discussion first and then we'll come back to equations and you know. So first of all, uh, today we'll plan like initial 40 to 45 minutes, we'll try to complete off textbook discussion and then we'll have some MCQs discussion as well. So first of all, we have this concept of acid etching, primer application, dentin bonding agents or adhesive and also we have this composite. Right? First of all, why do we need all these things? So. The rationale behind introducing this concept of acid etching or the rationale behind introducing the materials like primer or adhesive is the fact that in order to have some kind of increased retention to your substrate, especially when you're dealing with hydrophobic materials. So enamel to bonding has never been a problem or issue because the enamel as such it contains more of an organic substance and it's comparatively like uh, less water content. But the problem arises when we deal with bonding of dentin, where dentin contains more of organic as well as more of water content because of its tubular structure. So to have a reliable bonding, a better bonding, so we have this concept of bonding agents, we have this concept of acid etching, and we have these primers available. So what does it mean? We'll try to have some overview regarding all these materials, and then we'll go into the discussion. So acid etching, as you all know, it's nothing but you use some highly concentrated acid to create some kind of micro porosities on the surface of a mineralized structure so that there can be a resin tag penetration into these micro porosities. So that's the concept of acid etching. So we have something called as acid etching and conditioning, which are really different. So conditioning is a process where we try to remove the smear layer and also we try to modify the surface and we try to increase the surface energy and conditioning is done when, especially when you're going for GIC restoration. So I think you're all familiar with these concepts. And then we have something called as primer. So primers are nothing but in order to allow adhesive or a resin to go and form bonding. So we have this dentin bonding agents which are nothing but resins, right? A resin cannot directly go and permeate into these micro porosities given its viscosity or given its hydrophobic nature. So we have something called as primer. So primers are those which are low viscous hydrophilic materials which increase the wettability, which increase the flow or which has this better flow into these uh, micro porosities thereby enhancing bonding. So that's the concept of rationale or objective behind using primers. And then we have these adhesives or also called as bonding agents which actually form this hybrid layer. The bond formation is possible and resin tag penetration is possible because of these adhesives. So based on the ability to acid etch and based on uh, the ability to rinse or not to rinse, we have this broad classification of etch and rinse and self etch uh, systems. So etch and rinse are those where we try to etch a surface and then try to wash it off and then apply bonding agent. But self etch adhesives are those where there is no rinsing. So they are self etch in the sense the material itself acts as an etchant as well as as a primer. And also we have the seventh generation where you have three in one etchant, primer, and adhesive incorporated in single bottle. So there is like it's more, uh, it's less of technical sense to comparative. So we'll go into the insights of these things today. And also let's see this classification briefly and various examples or materials which come under or which fall under different generations of bonding agents. The previous edition, we have these generations mentioned. It's very confusing and complex, but the latest edition, it has been simplified a lot, including the presentation. It's uh, quite uh, awesome. So you can just go through the latest uh, literature, latest edition to have a better understanding and ease of grasping. So before starting, so we have a lot many questions.
Okay, yes, Regina, we'll do one thing. So we'll just proceed with the discussion. At the end of the session, if you still feel like you need answers for those questions, because we're going to answer all of them in the textbook discussion in the process, right? Yeah, we'll deal with these questions at the end of the session. So first, very important, I keep on saying key terms. So we'll just go through the key terms brief, and then we'll proceed with textbook discussion. So first, acid edge technique. So the process of cleaning and roughening a solid surface by exposing it to an acid and thoroughly rinsing the residue to promote micro-mechanical bonding. So we're trying to promote micro-mechanical bonding of an adhesive to a surface. And then you have adherent. Adherent is a material substrate that is bonded to another material by means of an adhesive. So the substrate is called as adherent. And then adhesion, it's nothing but a forces of attraction between dissimilar molecules, right? So you're all familiar with that. Adhesive, it's a substance that promotes adhesion. Whereas adhesive bonding, again, the same more or less. Bonding means binding to adjoining materials. And then you have cementing or cement, substance that hardens from a viscous state to a solid union between two surfaces. The cements you're all familiar with. Coercive strength, molecular attraction between molecules of same species, contact angle. So all this were discussed already. Angle between the adhesive and adherent, dentin bonding, bonding agents, which the process of bonding to bonding a resin to a conditioned dentin and then you have this dentin conditioner so dentin conditioner is an acidic agent that dissolves an organic structure in dentin resulting in collagen mesh that allows infiltration of an adhesive resin so when you once you go for etching or this conditioning what happens is the microporosities are created the collagen is exposed so collagen it's nothing but your dentin is like a matrix of collagen with uh, inorganic materials acting as fillers, right? So once the inorganic materials are removed, so collagen mesh is exposed. So collagen mesh has to be maintained taut, or else if it is collapsed again, there can be poor micromechanical bonding. And filler or reinforcing filler, so we have various filler particles incorporated in resin matrix, which we'll discuss later. Hybrid layer is very important. Just make a note of it. An intermediate layer of resin, collagen, and dentin. So it's an intermediate layer of resin, collagen, and dentin that's produced by acid etching of dentin and infiltration of resin into the conditioned dentin. Not just by acid etching, but also because of the infiltration, resin infiltration, we have this hybrid layer formation. Soluting cement, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with. Microlicase, fine. Micromechanical bonding is the mechanical interlocking that is associated with bonding of an adhesive to a roughened adherent surface. So obturation, preventive resin restoration, all this were discussed already. Primer. So primer is a hydrophilic, page 258, a hydrophilic low viscous resin that promotes bonding to an adherent substrate such as dentin. There is resin tax, extension of resin that has penetrated into etched enamel or dentin. So sandwich technique I'm quite sure you're all familiar with. So GIC on top of which we go for composite. Smear layer is again very important. Smear layer is poorly adherent layer of ground dentin produced by cutting dentin surface. Also, a tenacious deposit of microscopic debris that covers enamel, dentin, and even cementum, and thickness of smear layer can range from 5 to 10 microns, right? And surface energy, the excess energy of molecules at the surface of materials above that of molecules found in the interior of material. So you have a beautiful diagram in flips where they mention that you have these molecules arranged. So inner molecules will have low surface energy, the outer molecules will have higher surface energy, and they uh, have this potential propensity to go for bonding and surface tension you're all familiar with this concept wettability okay all this we have discussed previously in one of the live sessions right so we'll not just go into those key terms so we're more concerned about acid etching conditioning priming and adhesive primer is nothing but a hydrophilic low viscous resin whereas adhesive is the actual material which is being used to have this bonding to have this micro mechanical bond see First of all, you have a cavity preparation. So you have composite material to be added. So how do you add composite to your cavity? Com composite is hydrophobic material. It's a resin, right? So we need to have an intermediate layer. That is your dentin bonding agent or bonding agent, which acts as an intermediate layer between your cavity, that is your dentin, and the overlying composite. So this bonding agent again has the following components like primer and adhesive. Adhesive is actual resin or actual bonding agent, but primer facilitates the flow into these microporosities. So 
primer is a hydrophilic it has to be hydrophilic so that it can penetrate through the dentinal tubules and also primer is a hydrophilic low viscous resin it's a resin that promotes bonding to an adherent substrate such as dent so that's the difference between a primer and adhesive so on top of this primer you will have this adhesive but you have certain generations where both primer and adhesive are combined that is fifth generation which we all commonly use in our uh, undergraduation if you remember we have this acid etching and we have this one bottle where primer and adhesive are added combined if you remember right i hope i have answered your query bonus okay anomaly unfortunate that your network is horrible right so we'll proceed with page 262 dentin bonding agents right i hope you are doing good you have any questions drop them in the process of discussion i am sure most of them will be clarified but still if you still have any queries you can just drop them we'll try answering them at the end of the session So conditioning, for example, glass dynamo, we use the same liquid, 10% polyacrylic acid is used for conditioning of cavity. You just take a cotton pellet, apply the uh, liquid, and then you wash the cavity, right? So that you can remove smear layer, and then simultaneously, there can be increase in surface energy. Haven't you done conditioning when you're going for GIC during your undergraduation? Devon, I didn't get you confused with book. Which book to follow? You can follow any Phillips, right? I mean, we're following this uh, latest tradition, the bonding. I mean, we have this page 257. You can even follow the old edition, right? The concepts remain the same, but you'll have, I mean, it's more simplified here. And you have some additional information, which we're going to discuss again. The concept, the concept is different as such, uh, as you know, here it's mentioned as synonymous, but conditioning is different from your etching. It's not just the concentration, but it's a concept as such. As I said, conditioning is done to remove smear layer and it also promotes or increases the surface energy. But in case of acid etching, there is actual microporosity formation. You have this uh, 10 to 20 micron extensions into the su substrate and there can be resin infiltration. No, conditioning and itching are not the same. Yeah, fairness, thank you. Right, so dental bonding agents. So dental bonding agents are designed to provide a sufficiently strong interface. Bernice, you have your answer now. So to provide a sufficiently strong interface between the restrained composites and tooth structure to withstand mechanical forces and shrinkage. The success of adhesives is dependent on two types of bonding micromechanical interlocking, chemical bonding with enamel dentin or both, and also copolymerization with resin matrix of composite materials. So the success of adhesives depend up, depends upon this type of bonding and also depends upon the copolymerization between the adhesive resin and the overlying resin. And before the total H was adopted, enamel bonding agents were used to enhance the wetting and adaptation of resin to conditioned enamel surface. Generally, enamel bonding agents may be, are made by combining different dimethacrylates such as bis-GMA, triethylene glycol dimethacrylate, tech-DMA to control the viscosity and to enhance wetting. So enamel bonding agents are made up of materials such as bis-GMA and tech-DMA. Just underline that point to control the viscosity and to enhance the wetting. These agents have no potential for adhesion, but they can promote micromechanical bonding by forming optimal resin tags. Okay, just skip that part. Now, as discussed in the earlier section, the last one on the adhesion mechanisms, a successful dentin bonding system must meet several requirements. So, what are the requirements to have this successful dentin bonding? So the first point is adequate removal and dissolution of smear layer from enamel and dentin, which happens with acid etching. Second, maintenance or reconstitution of dentin collagen matrix. So the collagen matrix has to be maintained fully and it shouldn't be collapsed. Once you dry excessively, there can be collapse of this dentin, I mean this collagen. That's so once you wet the dentin or once you plot dry, 
So it should not be eight dry, it has to be blot dry. For example, take a wet cotton pellet. So it has to be wet, moist, but not excess water has to be there. It has to be blot dry so that the collagen mesh is again uh, reframed to its original structure. So that there won't be collapse of collagen, which is essential. Collagen has to be opened up. Collagen meshwork has to be opened up to have this resin penetration. And good wetting has to be there. And efficient monomer diffusion and penetration. That's why you're using your primers. And polymerization with tooth structure, if possible. And copolymerization with resin composite matrix. So polymerization with tooth matrix is something like your hybrid layer formation. An intermediate layer between your resin, collagen, and dentin. So these are some of the requirements to have successful dentin bonding agents. To summarize, adequate removal of smear layer, good wetting, and maintenance or reconstitution of the collagen meshwork, efficient monomer diffusion, hybrid layer formation, and copolymerization of this bonding agent with the overlying composite material. Now. We'll just go through in brief the composition of this dentin bonding agent. So we have this primer, we have this acid HN primer, adhesive, and also we have this filler particles and few antibacterial agents being added. We'll just go through in brief and try to complete off this as soon as possible. And remember, in HNs you have, uh, see, HNs are relatively strong acids. The pH is just underline that point. pH is between one to two, which is used to remove smear layers and to dissolve the mineral phase to allow formation of micro-mechanical interlocking in enamel and tendon. This is all we are all familiar with. And the concentration of phosphoric acid that's being used is between 37% and 50%. Just pay attention to all these points and if possible, make a note of them or underline them. These are very important. The concentration range of this phosphoric acid is between 37 to 50% can be used, is acceptable. However, if the concentration is more beyond 50%, there can be formation of monocalcium phosphate, which is a tightly adherent layer to the underlying dentin, which cannot be removed easily and it cannot be dissolved further, thereby preventing the microporosity formation, thereby preventing the resin penetration. That's very important. So, phosphoric acid at the concentration between 30 to 50%, typically 37% is used to provide etching pattern. By the way, we have three etching patterns. Type one, when the core is uh, demineralized. Type two, we have this honeycomb appearance where the periphery is uh, demineralized. And type three, we have combined, right? So we have types of etching patterns also, which is mentioned in the old edition, right? And concentrations greater than 50% result in deposition of an adherent layer of monocalcium phosphate monohydrate on the etched surface. Yes, Bernice, the old one is totally different, but new one, we have a lot many points, additional points. So I've chosen the new one in spite of having an old edition with me. Concentration greater than 50% result in deposition of an adherent layer of monocalcium phosphate monohydrate. This is very important. Monocalcium phosphate monohydrate, which is tightly adherent layer, preventing further dissolution of uh, the underlying dentin thereby leading to uh, I mean there is no microporosity formation thereby affecting the bonding right so you can just skip the rest of the part and then we have something called as primer and in HMs like if you have this liquid uh, consistency and gel consistency gel consistency is usually preferred because in gel consistency you'll have better control over the flow of the material right yeah, we have different types of etching patterns in the sense you have this dentin structure, cross section of dentin, you have this uh, dentinal tubules, you have this peritubular dentin and all intertubular dentin, right? So we have three types of etching pattern. Type 1 is where the, I think type 1, uh, we have one honeycomb pattern. Yeah, type 1 as far as I remember, let me know if I'm wrong. The central or the core of the tubule is dissolved and you have this honeycomb appearance and type 2, it will be like uh, the periphery of uh, the dental tubules is dissolved and the core remains and type 3, it, it will be like a mixed pattern of etching, right? It depends upon the areas, I mean, it depends upon the pattern where there is demineralization. So based on that, you have these three types, type 1, 2 and 3. Yeah, type 1 is honeycomb because you have this honeycomb because the central core is dissolved. So type 2 will be the reverse. 
Peritubular dental is dissolved, but the core remains, and type 3 is mixed pattern. Your type 2 is cobblestone. Yeah, thanks, Sairaj. It's not that damages pulp, but as such, it forms an adherent layer which further prevents dissolution or demineralization of the underlying dentin. As such, phosphoric acid has the ability to irritate pulp. 37% or 50% does irritate pulp, but depends upon whether it depends upon the remaining dentin thickness again, you know, right? Yeah. So now, after uh, going through etchings, I, I hope Shilpa, you got. Uh, the answer for what you asked for, right? Gita, I didn't get you. Teal, the st silver stone classification, what is it? Yeah, right. So we have this primers. As we have discussed, primers are hydrophilic low viscous materials. So we have various primers. Uh, for example, yeah, as discussed, dental morning, okay, this is all fine. Primers are solutions containing hydrophilic monomers dissolved in solvents such as acetone, ethanol, or water. So we have solvents like acetone, ethanol, and water. Such monomers exhibit hydrophilic properties through phosphate. You might be asking me like, even though these hydrophilic, even though these primers are resins, how do they have this hydrophilic property? So this hydrophilic property is attributed to some functional groups such as phosphates, carboxylic acids, alcohols, or ester functional groups. So because of these functional groups, even though it's a resin, primary is a resin, it still has this hydrophilic property. And hydroxyethyl methacled is a widely used primer monomer because of its high hydrophilicity and solvent-like nature. Just underline that point or note that point. So HEMA, HEM, hydroxyethyl methacled is a widely used primer monomer because of its high hydrophilicity and solvent-like nature. And we have one key point here. Primer mixtures have a wide pH range because of variations in functional groups. Yeah, so primer mixtures have a wide pH range because of variations in functional groups of the corresponding monomers. The rank of functional groups in their acidity is, please make a note of this. So based on their acidity, we have a grading like which functional group has highest acidity and which one has the lowest acidity. We have this rank given. So the rank of functional groups in their acidity is, so sulfonic acid is more acidic. It means it has very low pH, followed by phosphonic, followed by phosphoric acid, followed by carboxylic acid, followed by alcohol. So this is the rank of these groups based on their acidity. So sulfonic acid is more acid, it's more acidic. It means it has a very less pH, right? Sulfonic acid followed by phosphonic, followed by phosphoric followed by carboxylic and alcohol. Just write down this sequence, this is very important. So this sequence is based on the acidity of the functional groups. And if the concentration of acidic monomers is increased in HEMA base, a primary a primer formulation may reach pH low enough, okay, one to two to remove smear layer and etch the underlying dentin. If the primer has ability to bond H and joints, okay, right. This is again very important. We have this concept of self etching primers, right? So how does it happen? Because in H and rinse, we have a separate etchant, that's one person phosphoric acid, we etch, we rinse, and then we apply primer, right? So that's how we do. But in case of self etching primers, how does the concept work out? So here it is. If the concentration of acidic monomers, which we discussed now in the sequence, if the concentration of acidic monomers is increased in HEMA base, HMA, a primer formulation may reach a pH of 1 to 2. And this pH of 1 to 2 is sufficient to remove smear layer and also to simultaneously etch and prime and also to simultaneously etch the underlying dentin. So because of very low pH, there is removal of smear layer, there is in fact, acid etching, etching happening in, in the underlying dentin and also this material acts as a primer. So that's how we have this self etching primers. I hope I've clarified that for you. So if the concentration of acidic monomers is increased in a HEMA base, a primer formulation may reach a pH of low as low as 1 to 2 to remove the smear layer and also to etch the underlying dentin. 
if the primer has the ability to both etch and prime it is considered or categorized as self etching primer right so for this purpose acidic monomers are frequently used to formulate self etching primers so it's simple so we have the self etching primers they work because those primers those resins like hema which are hydrophilic we add certain acidic functional groups like sulfonic acid so you have this phosphonic acid etc so that the ph drops down to very low so that it acts not only as a primer but also as an etchant that's why they're called as self etching primers right so very simple to understand but thing is you need to remember those acidic monomers as well as acidic functional groups representative of these are hema 10 mdp 4 mat 4 meta and mac 10 so various self etching primers various self etching primers you can just make a note of this various self etching primers include hema hema 10 mdp which is 10 methacryloxy disyl dihydrogen phosphate 4 met 4 methacryloxy ethyl trimelitic acid 4 meta 4 methacryloxy ethyl trimelitic anhydride and mac 10 methacryloxy and this this anil dicarboxylic acid so representative of these self etching primers include hema 10 mdp 4 met 4 meta and mac 10 okay next so early dentin bonding agents were used let's see if i can skip out anything so yeah composite mrx that's all we can discuss in composites right yeah yeah we can just skip out this part yeah next we have something called as solvents so solvents also play a role as i have discussed we have these primers and we have these primers where they are added to some solvents like acetone alcohol and also ethanol right so primers are solutions containing hydrophilic resin materials dissolved in solvents solvents such as acetone alcohol or ethanol so now we are going to have brief discussion about solvents So solvents play a primary role in priming systems which is obvious the most commonly used solvents are water ethanol and acetone just underline this point water ethanol and acetone so water can ionize acidic monomers as well as re-expand the collapsed collagen network if water is used as a solvent it can ionize we have seen in yesterday like zinc phosphate water plays an important role in ionizing the acid and controls the rate of reaction if you remember so water ionizes the acidic monomers as well as helps in re-expanding the collapsed collagen network ethanol and acetone have better miscibility with relatively hydrophobic monomers and their water chasing ability facilitates water removal so water has some advantage i mean water used as solvent has some advantages as we have mentioned previously so water helps in re-expanding the collagen network and also water helps in ionizing the monomers right however water is considered to be harmful to your bonding so water if it is present there can be degradation of the bond and there can be micro leakages whereas ethanol or acetone they have better miscibility they are relatively hydrophobic monomers and they have this water chasing ability thereby having better bonding we'll discuss that again so these are some of the important points pertaining to solvents we have water ethanol and acetone yeah right we'll get back to those questions soon and then we have this adhesives so the core the dentin bonding the core is adhesives so adhesives we have various adhesives usually these adhesive resins are i um, mean it's given the last they're hydrophobic the dimethacrylates such as bis gma tec dma and urethane dimethacrylates and small amounts of hema so we have various adhesives and these adhesives are hydrophobic that's the reason why we're having these primers right so hydrophobic acids they're hydrophobic example bis gma tec dma and udma so for dentin bonding the primary purpose of adhesive is to fill the interfibrillar space of collagen network so bernice you asked previously and also regina you asked one question right so dentin bonding the primary purpose of adhesive is to fill the interfibrillar space of collagen network creating a hybrid layer and resin tag to provide micro mechanical retention upon polymerization so resin tags 
hybrid layer formation is because of these adhesives such as bis gma tech dma udma and also hema etc even hema can be used as an adhesive not only a primer but also an adhesive and initiator systems i am sure you are all familiar with this initiators accelerators and all so initiator systems in case of light initiators i mean light initiated uh, systems you have photosensitizer molecule camphor quinone and an initiator tertiary amine and uh, and then dimethyl p toluidine we have this tertiary amine right so in case of light cure bonding agents or light cure resins we have initiated tertiary amine and photosensitizer camphor quinone in case of your self cure we have initiated benzoyl peroxide right and also through dual cure initiator system so all this already we, we, we can discuss that separately in your composite etc right so that's in brief about initiators and also these bonding agents contain filler particles to increase the strength and to improve the mechanical properties so nanometer sized silica particles have been added to reinforce the adhesive and thereby provide higher bond strengths however it's a question whether these can be really functional because the strengthening effect of the filler in adhesives is uncertain because it is not clear whether these fillers can actually penetrate into the demineralized collagen network since the interfibrillar space of collagen network the, between the fibrils the space between the fibrils is 20 nanometers but the size of filler particles is 40 micrometers so it's a question it's uncertain whether these filler particles really go penetrate through these interfibrillar space and increase the bonding so it's a question mark yeah so that's pertaining to these filler particles and then most importantly you have other ingredients so other ingredients like glutaraldehyde which acts as a desensitizer and we have these antimicrobials being added for example mdpb bromides which act as paraben so we have paraben bromides and mdpb which act as antimicrobials and also fluoride can be incorporated which is added to prevent secondary caries and benzalkonium chloride and chlorhexidine which are used to prevent collagen degradation you know what we have something called as MMPs, matrix metalloproteinases, which are present within the collagen. And these MMPs, they degrade collagen naturally. They're present within the tooth structure. So these MMPs degrade collagen. Once the collagen is degraded, what happens to bone strength? There is no resin infiltration, right? So bone strength will be compromised. So we have certain agents which act as MMP inhibitors, for example, chlorhexidine. So when you add chlorhexidine, or when you wash a cavity with chlorhexidine, what happens is these chlorhexidines inhibit these natural matrix metalloproteinases, thereby uh, the collagen health is maintained and the bonding is enhanced comparatively, which is proved in many in vitro studies, right? So we have these uh, MMPs which are activated and they degenerate the hybrid layer and that can be prevented by adding these MMP inhibitors such as chlorhexidine. Right, I hope I've clarified that for you. So this is in brief the various composition of bonding agents. We discussed about acid chains, we discussed about primers, adhesives, fillers, solvents, and also we discussed about other ingredients. It's very simple to understand. And however, we need to have a lot of memory. Just underline those points, make a note of them, just revise twice or thrice, that's it. It will be registered in your brain. So we still have a few aspects to be discussed. We'll just go through them real quick. We'll just take two minute break, right? Yeah. Yes, you know, vital tooth it's always better to go for the self-edge kind of systems because H&N rings, the third, fourth and fifth generation, the main problem is there will be a lot of uh, post-op sensitivity. So because of fluid movement and all as per Brandstrom's theory. But with sixth and seventh generation, when you use the self-edge, we have this lesser complaints of post-op sensitivity. So obviously vital to the sixth and seventh would be the better choice, even though the bond strengths are not so great. Rishabh, I hope I explained about self-etching primers. I hope it's clear, right?
overall dentin bonding agent is hydrophilic or hydrophobic nidhi it's mixed primers are hydrophilic we have hydrophilic uh, uh, groups added to your uh, hydrophobic part right so it's a combination of both and you know what dentin bonding agent has to be both hydrophilic and hydrophobic only then you will have that junction formation dentin bonding agent is a bridge between your tooth structure and your composite so bonding agent should have one arm which is hydrophilic to catch hold of your dentin the other arm which is hydrophobic to catch hold of your resin right so it is both hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic yeah ashina true both bonding agent is both Yes, exactly, Bernice. You're right. Regina, I hope I've answered your query. Moshimito, thank you so much for your wishes and wish you and your family the same. Thank you. The pulp protection agents. How pulp is closed? Pulp is not closed. We have this tertiary dentin formation, uh, Sairaj. We have this calcified bridge formation. That's how we have this insulation effect. Uh, there are many studies uh, saying that, like duration, as such, not specific, but there are many studies giving many values. I think it's not that critical, really. No? Okay. Right. So we'll just proceed with the properties. So we have these bond strengths and all. We'll just go through only the important points, not rush up the entire uh, literature, right? So I've chosen a few important points. So if you observe measurement of bond strength, page 266, the first para has mentioned that no universal agreement on minimal bond strength necessary to provide successful bonding has been established. However, a value of 20 megapascals or higher has been proposed as a reasonable goal. Just underline that point, right? So reasonable bond strength value is 20 megapascals or even greater. So microtensile bond strength, all this is not relevant for you now. I'll just leave it because even my thesis was on microtensile bond strength. So you have this tensile bond strength and microtensile. Microtensile, the specimen size, the diameter will be very finite, 1 mm. And it has many advantages or tensile strength. I think it's beyond the scope for discussion now, right? And then you have this measurement of microlicase. Obviously, when you compare the bond strength of enamel and dentin, enamel is going to have better bond strength, right? Yeah, we have higher bond strength values for enamel. Next. Measurement of microlicase. Microlicase can be measured by dye penetration studies, bacterial penetration studies, various tracers can be used, various dyes can be used. So all this is also not relevant. And, and, I mean, it is not necessary to go in detail. Page 267, you have aging effects and degradation of hybrid layer. So hybrid layer, it's mentioned that we'll just go through this point. Several investigations have found that bond strength of three-step adhesive systems, that is, fourth generation shows a little or no decrease in contrast to two-step adhesive systems that decrease significantly during the four to five year span. We'll discuss the reason separately, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we have this classification. So classification, we have various generations that's obsolete now. So we have a newer classification that is based on your ability to etch the surface and wash the surface. You have this etch and rinse classification and you have the self-etch classification, right? So we'll go through etch and rinse adhesives first. So first we have, I mean, page 267, etch and rinse adhesives. So we have fourth generation and fifth generation. So fourth generation also called as three step because you can look at the figure 127 where they clearly mentioned all the generations. We'll just go through that table first and then we'll go ahead with the literature given. So figure 127, we have fourth generation, three step. So fourth generation is called as three step where you have conditioning, priming, and you have this adhesive. And then fifth generation, you have conditioning and you have primer and adhesive mixed in one, right? 
and then you have the sixth generation where you have these combinations right self fetch primers or self fetch adhesives and seventh generation you have a single bottle or you have a component where you have this uh, you have this kind of division between the same syringe this can be crushed and these components can be mixed so overall fourth generation three steps fifth generation two steps sixth and seventh these are self fetch right so these two are etch and rinse and these two are self fetch so self fetch you have sixth and seventh generation sixth generation two bottle seventh generation single bottle right so this is the overview so we'll just go through the literature so etch and rinse at this time the most established most reliable adhesion method in this category consists of three steps and acid etchant application by the way ashina don't get confused since it's given as conditional here go through the philips go through conditional go through the ketone conditioner and conditioning then you'll have much more clarity both conditioning and acid etching are different altogether right now three step fourth generation so we have three steps here it's a fourth generation bonding agent and acid etchant so initially acid etchant is applied then primer is applied then bonding agent is applied right so the primer contains hydrophilic functional monomers dissolved in organic solvents so all this we have already discussed right so fourth generation three step there is three steps like acid etching followed by primer application followed by bonding agent application right that's it and then you have two step which is comparatively simplified two step so both this fourth generation and fifth generation come under etch and rinse we call this as etch and rinse because you are adding an etchant you are washing it or rinsing it and then you are applying primer and bonding agent right so two step or fifth generation a simplified method in this category combines the primer and adhesive so you have etchant primer and adhesive combined together and this is the one which we commonly use in our uh, departments i mean uh, most of us in our undergraduate so this etch and rinse strategy is the most effective to achieve efficient and stable bonding to enamel and etching usually with a 30 to 40 percent phosphoric acid and then rinsed away promotes dissolution of enamel rods porosities polymerization okay all this is fine however when dealing with the dentinal substrate bonding is more different difficult and less predictable than enamel because dentin has more organic characteristics and it also has water so in this case phosphoric acid treatment exposes a collagen so you do acid etching you have this 37% phosphoric acid which exposes the collagen network that is nearly devoid of hydroxyapatite so entire mineral structure is removed from your collagen i mean from your dentin bonding occurs by diffusion and infiltration of resin within the collagen mesh forming a hybrid layer right and after inside to polymerization this hybrid layer provides micro mechanical retention and as explained earlier true chemical adhesive bonding is unlikely we don't find any chemical adhesion we find only micro mechanical adhesion in the two step category we use hydrophilic and ionic ionic monomers with the result that the bonded interface doesn't develop a hydrophobic resin layer thus leaves the bond susceptible to water penetration and subsequent degradation which greatly reduces the bond durability and that's what we have discussed previously if you remember i mentioned previously that the bond strength there is no degradation okay what is it yeah bond strength values remain high in case of fourth generation but bond strength values are falling down or they are decreasing in quantity at the end of 4 to 5 year span so there is bond degradation in case of fifth generation fourth generation is the previous generation which has better bonding than fifth generation why fifth generation also with enamel you have good bonding because enamel more of an organic but with dentin fifth generation you are having a problem with bonding over a period of 4 to 5 years as per the studies the reason is we are using more of hydrophilic monomers and these hydrophilic monomers form a component in the hybrid layer whenever it is hydrophilic so your dentin contains water so the water and this hydrophilic resin material they both interact and the resin is dissolved over a period of time leading to drop in the bond strength values hence it's mentioned that several investigations have found that the bond strength of three step adhesive systems of fourth generation show little or no decrease in 
bond strength values compared to two step adhesive systems or fifth generation adhesive systems that decrease significantly during a four or five year time it means fourth generation the bond strength values are remaining high even after four to five years but fifth generation the bond strength values are falling after four to five years this is because of incorporation of hydrophilic monomers in the hybrid layer or in the priming process thereby leading to its degradation over a period of time because dentin contains water the material is hydrophilic which you are adding so there is interaction and there is dissolution so in a two step category hydrophilic and ionic monomers are combined with the result that the bonded interface doesn't develop a hydrophobic resin layer and thus leaves the bond susceptible to water penetration and subsequent degradation which greatly reduces bond durability right i hope i have clarified that for you if you still have any question you can just drop it and then we are done with fourth and fifth generation which is nothing but your h and rings now we have self h self h we already discussed so we have these primers to which these acidic functional groups are added sulfonic acids now we have this phosphonic acid phosphoric acid alcohols all this stuff being added right so that the ph can be dropped so that the primer also acts as an h it so self h primer so self h adhesives we have six generation and seven generation six generation is two step seven generation is one step you have seen that illustration so sixth generation this approach doesn't involve a separate etching step in this case an acidic monomer which is not rinsed is used to condition and prime the tooth at the same time so we use a liquid which has both which acts as both etchant as well as primer there is self etch primer and we have adhesive so it's a two step procedure there are two types of self etch which is one is mild and one is strong strong self etch adhesives have a very low ph of less than 1 and they have been documented with a bonding mechanism that resembles etch and rinse adhesives it's in general considered that the bond strength values of 6th and 7th generations are low compared to the 4th and 5th generations but in 6th generation strong etchants when they are used the bond strength values are not low but they are comparable to that of the previous generation so strong self etch adhesives of ph less than 1 have been documented with a bonding mechanism that resembles etch and rinse adhesives and then you have this mild self etch adhesives where the ph is very low just 2 only partially dissolve the dent in surface so a substantial amount of hydroxide remains available within the hybrid layer so that's about your uh, mild self etch adhesives since we are using mild self etch adhesives so mild in the sense there is incomplete demineralization so some amount of hydroxide is still left in the collagen mesure so because of this it's being mentioned that there is improved bonding to dentin improved bonding to dentin because these uh, interactions happen with the hydroxide the functional groups which are present in the primers interact with this hydroxide that thereby enhancing bonding so when using mild self etch adhesives only partially dissolve they partially dissolve the dentin surface a so substantial amount of hydroxide remains specific carboxylic and phosphate functional groups can chemically interact with the residual hydroxy abatite but that chemical interaction has not been documented it's just a hypothesis or a speculation right however this interfacial zone can be more prone to hydrolytic degradation because the structure is more hydrophilic and the dentin bond durability of mild self etch primer seems to be adequate so again the same as we discussed previously the bond interface is mostly hydrophilic so there is a potential for degradation of bond with time right so we have the challenge here and then we have finally a one step or seven generation the simplified method where all etchant primer and adhesive are mixed up in a single bottle right and also we have another variation that is available as you have seen a syringe here in the image so the syringe contains a blister compartments which can be broken so each compartment contains primer adhesive and etchant so when you compress the syringe the compartments the membrane separating the compartments break and there is union of all these components before you apply on to the tooth structure so more 
one step or all in one system so seven generation is also called as all in one system so all in one systems are delivered by a bottle vial or single unit dose however there is a variation where we have two liquid components packed in separate blister compartments in a single dispenser when you apply pressure the compartments i mean the separation breaks and then there is union between your selfage primers and adhesives right that's why it's mentioned in the illustration that you have selfaging and primer or adhesive two compartments so these are your compartments which are separated by a membrane which can be broken once you press it or once you apply pressure or all the systems combined in single bottle are also available in case of your seventh generation all in one okay so this completes our uh, sixth and seventh generation also and also remember seventh generation is less technique sensitive and based on the clinical experience and based on the reviews which i got from my uh, seniors or my professors usually with each generation bonding bond strength has to be improved but bond strength seems to be low comparatively for sixth and seventh generations however Sixth generation, it's mentioned that the bond strength is acceptable to that of fifth generation. And also remember, why do you have the sixth and seventh generation when you have this fourth and fifth? The one reason is it's less technique sensitive. With each generation, the number of steps are being decreased. That's understood, right? And also remember, you have this H and rings and self H. So self H are latest ones, right? So the problem with H and rings is you might have experienced that clinically also. Once you, are, you have undergone any composite or once you do a composite treatment, patient complains of post-op sensitivity because once you add agent, as one of you rightly mentioned, once you add agent, once you wash it, once you dry it, and then you apply a bonding agent, there will be a lot of fluid movement within the tubules, Branstorm's theory, hydrodynamic theory. So there can be a lot of post-op sensitivity with agent rinse. But with latest generation, like sixth and seventh generation, what happens is you're not rinsing. You're not drying or rinsing, right? So there is selfage. So as a result of which post-op sensitivity decreases. So that's another added clinical advantage we have with these latest generations, right? So this is in brief about various generations. And also it's mentioned finally, at the end it's mentioned page 268, the clinical applications of all these systems. Some general recommendations for specific situations are given below. For bonding composite course, just underline them, make a note of them. That's, this is very important. Clinical applications of this bonding agents, like which one has to be used in which clinical context. So for bonding composite course, composite core is nothing but your post under restoration or when the core you're trying to fill up with composite, right? The bulk of the cavity being filled with composite. For bonding composite cores, three-step H and rinse, four generation, uh, four generation systems are usually recommended. For bonding anterior and posterior composites and cementation of veneers with resin cements, two-step or fifth generation systems are indicated. So for case of composite core buildup, we, I mean, it's, uh, four generation uh, bonding agents are advocated. For bonding anterior and posterior composites and cementation of veneers, we need more better bonding, right? Better bond strength. So fifth generation is advocated. And for bonding posterior composites, self H or two step or sixth generation. So posterior composite, sixth generation bonding agents are advocated, even they have better bonding. And finally, seventh generation is advised for bonding aesthetic posts and ceramic restorations because aesthetic posts and all very technique sensitive. So the bonding agent application has to be simplified. So maybe seventh generation has been recommended for luting or for binding or for using uh, that for your aesthetic post and ceramic restoration. So I'll just summarize once and for all. Bonding composite cores, we use H and rinse fourth generation, three step. And for posterior composites and cementation of veneers with resin cements, we use fifth generation. And sixth generation is used for posterior composite restorations. And seventh generation is used for aesthetic post and ceramic restorations bonded with resin cements. Right? So th these are some of the recommendations given. So fourth generation, core builder of composite. Fifth generation for anterior and posterior composites and for veneer fixation with uh, resin cements. Sixth generation for posterior composites, seventh generation for aesthetic post placement or ceramic restoration uh, bonding 
using resin cements, right? Just make a note of them. I know it's very challenging. Bonding agents are very challenging, but you need to memorize all these topics. And you have this table 12.1, where they have completely summarized all the bonding agents and the procedures which we have discussed so far, including the examples. I don't really suggest you to remember the examples, but at least make sure that you remember one, but even that doesn't make much difference or much sense. So we have the classification of bonding agent systems and based on the clinical steps. So fourth generation, you have etching, so 15 seconds priming, applying one to five layers and then bonding. So etching, priming and bonding. Two step or fifth generation, you etch for 15 seconds and then prime and bond simultaneously. And sixth generation, etch and prime followed by bonding and seventh generation, all in one, right? So all these are mentioned along with examples, right? So you can just go through that table as well. So this formally completes our bonding and bonding agents. We have a lot, lot many important points over this particular topic. So I'm quite sure it's very boring. I'm quite sure it's uh, very uninteresting, but the concept is very beautiful. Because once you start doing these things, applying these things clinically, it will be much more interesting and the bond strengths, post-op sensitivity, and you have this, take, I mean, you have these numerous steps to be followed, even though the previous generations are a hell of a process. The latest ones, they're quite simplified and very interesting to use as well, right? So bonding agents as such, we have this textbook discussion, which is, I'm quite sure, uh, like uh, how it has happened. And I'm, I'm also quite sure that most of you might have jumped out and have, would have gone for dinner or something. <laughs> so we complete our textbook discussion pertaining to bonding agents. We'll just take two minute break and then we'll have MCQs discussion. We have few MCQs to discuss and then we'll proceed with the conclusion part, right? Yes, we can place base uh, for composite. What about anterior tooth? Aesthetics e will be effective again, right? You place base only on the floor. What about the dentin which is present along the walls then? We'll have two minute break and then we'll proceed with MCQs, right? It's surprising to see a comment like interesting, regular, is it really interesting? Great then. Saira, are you still online? It's 11.15, by the way.
Okay, then we'll proceed with the MCQs. Yes, but we will have a summary at the end of the session, right? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to send this music to your WhatsApp? Sure. I haven't downloaded that. I'm playing that using my YouTube creator tool. Uh, anyways, I'll definitely do send it, right? Okay. Yeah, of course, we need patience. That's the reason why I tried to have this in a separate session. I didn't mix it with the previous MCQs. Anyways, well, I will have a summary at the end, right? So we have our first question, assertion and reason. So a 37%, so assertion is a 37% phosphoric acid is used for acid etching. 37%. Reason, greater than 50% concentration lead to deposition of adherent layer of monocalcium phosphate monohydrate on etched surface which promotes further dissolution. So again, the same sequence. Assertion is true, reason is true, it is justified. Assertion is true, reason is true, it's not justified. Assertion is true, reason is false. Assertion is false, reason is true. So try answering in this way. So I'm quite sure you'll be extra careful while answering questions from now on, right? Yes, Ashina. Again, Ashina and Gina. Bernice, Abhishek. Yeah, Ashina, Gina, Regina, right. We have this now. <laughs> okay, you have the same bottle, right. Yes, Mega. Yes, me too. Okay. Okay, <laughs> again, Gina, Shina, now Regina, come on, comment and complete the cycle. So assertion is true and reason is false, right? So the monocalcium phosphate monohydrate prevents further dissolution, right? So assertion is true and reason is false. So option C is the right answer. Pooja, just go through the reason completely. It's mentioned that it promotes further dissolution. The layer which is being formed promotes further dissolution, right? Yeah, just read the question completely. Be careful when you're answering such questions, right? You can have, it seems to be very simple, but we can land ourselves in so. Right, so we'll have our second question then. So we have this matching. So you have matching like on the left side, assume that you have A, B, C, D. On the right side, you have one, two, three, four. So match accordingly, like A, three, B, one, 
C4, D2, something like that, right? So give me the appropriate answer. So match the following. So you have A, fourth generation, B, fifth, C, sixth, D, seventh, and one self etching adhesive single component, two conditioning primer and adhesive, three conditioning combined primer and adhesive, four self etching primer adhesive. It seems to be confusing, but it's very easy to answer once you know the concept. I think it's sleep time. <laughs> Yes, Bernice. Yes, Sairaj, come on. Mm -hmm. Yes, me too. Yes, Prithvi. Yes, Sairaj, Ashina. Okay, I'll give you some time, don't worry, you try answering it. Like, it will take some time to answer these questions, right? Yes, Mega. A2, B3, C4, and D1. Yes, Rishabh. So, if you can answer this question, it means the concept is clear for you. This is very important, like which generation has which components in it. So based on that, you can uh, go further into the discussion. Yes, Devna. Yeah, try answering. In the meantime, I'll just type out the next question. Yes, Regina. I'm really sorry, I'm unable to control my yawning. So last night I had only three hours sleep, hardly. So I, I slept in the evening, uh, four to seven. So again, I became human. So my body is signaling that I should sleep for Yes, yes, Priti. <laughs> okay, Sirisha, Kuja, Devna. Yes, Devna, don't worry. Uh, no, it's nothing like that, Sirisha. Uh, hard work, okay, but it, would, it wouldn't be sustained without the support I'm getting. That's what I keep on saying. What really drives me is the support I get. Or else, uh, no uh, person in his right mind would be doing such things. So there is some strong motive behind. So I hope I project that every time when I come live or whenever I teach or whenever I post a question. This strong motive of giving quality. Yeah, yes, Rishabh. So it is a2, B3, C4, and D1. Yes, they were, it will be confusing, but don't worry. Uh, just go through the text literature once. It will be much simplified. So fourth generation, let me just summarize. You have three steps. Conditioning, priming, and adhesive application. Fourth generation, three step. Also called as three step. Fifth generation and sixth generation, they are called as two step. So what is the difference then? Fifth generation, you have etchant separate. Just imagine what would, have, what would you have followed in your... Uh, department the same we are discussing now 
departments usually follow fifth generation as far as I remember. So what do you do? You acid etch, and then you have this primary bonding isn't combined in one bottle, right? So that is your fifth generation, two step. Sixth generation also is two step, but you have self etching primers. The concept of self etching primers in sixth generation, and then you have adhesive. That's it. Seventh generation all in one primer, uh, adhesive, and your etchant combined together, right? So that's your seventh generation. Regina, I didn't get you. Uh, you should follow your recommendations. I'm sorry. So the right answer is A2, B3, C4, and D1, right? So all of you are given the right answer. Uh, I hope, yeah. Third generation is not being considered as a generation in your latest edition. So it, has be, it hasn't been even mentioned in your uh, latest generation. We have this concept of hybrid layer and all, right? Yeah. So A2, B3, D1, and C4. Now, coming to the third question, clinically acceptable bond strength values for dentin bonding agents are 20 MPa, 30 MPa, 10 MPa, 40 MPa. So as we have discussed, it's mentioned, it's right in your textbook that a minimum of 20 or above is considered to be is considered to be clinically acceptable. Yeah, as far as I remember, even third generation is a three step. We have this concept of conditioning introduced, right? We have this hybrid layer formation. Yeah, but primer, I'm not exactly sure, Ashwina. I'll have to refer it. Or if anyone has 11th edition, just go through it and please let me know. Hi, Mini. Yes, yes, all steps are performed separate, but I'm not exactly sure about the primer application. Right, so the clinically acceptable bond strength values for dentin bonding agents, it's 20 megapascals or above, right? Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward question. So in the meantime, if anyone has 11th edition, uh, I'm not having that exactly now. So if you have 11th edition, please go through the third generation and just give some information or throw some light on it. I'm good, many. Thank you so much. Hope you're also doing fine. You're not feeling well, man. You're sick or something? Okay, Gina, thank you so much. Third generation, step one is dentin, yeah, conditioning. Step two is primer. Step three is adhesive. Yes, thank you so much, Gina. Okay.
placement of a resin or composite doesn't come under a step neetu so i think it has to be three steps with respect to bonding agent application we have this resin placement also but it, it, it's not considered as a step right sixth generation you have two bottles in as per the latest edition you have two bottles self etching primer and adhesive sixth generation is two step abhishek seventh generation single single bottle right so we have our fourth question hybrid layer is uh, by the way thank you jina and uh, sirisha for giving me the information also for every one of us so uh, hybrid layer is an intermediate layer of resin and collagen resin and dentin resin and demineralized dentin none of the above okay nitu so it's written as four steps okay so even addition of resin or composite material is mentioned as a step there right okay you know is i also refer that once then in that case if you follow the same concept then you can't call this fourth as three step and fifth as two step because after two steps again you have to go for resin placement right the composite resin then even this has to be modified Abhishek, I'll clear that for you. Don't worry. Just leave it now. Just leave it. Try answering this question. I'll clear that concept for you again. Right? So fourth question: Hybrid layer is an intermediate layer of. So you say which option? Option D. so which is the right answer i mean you say option a so as we have discussed previously hybrid layer is the layer which is formed between like the combination of your resin infiltration exposed collagen meshwork and then you have dentin right so the three combined form the hybrid layer so the resin infiltration the collagen meshwork and the underlying dentin so it's a combination of three so option d none of the above is the more appropriate answer right yeah okay we'll have our final question a simplified one again so fourth question option d is the right answer so final question of the day which of the following is less technique sensitive a oh, mini by the way you said you have malaria so how is it now hope you're doing fine so that's the reason why you're not online for the past 2 days or 3 days so final question okay good many take care <laughs> thanks bonus but you are late this time so which of the following is less technique sensitive uh, fourth generation fifth generation sixth seventh generation technique sensitive less technique sensitive so abhishek you have a partial answer here seventh generation is considered to be less technique sensitive because of simplified steps we have all compounds mixed in one so single step procedure yes sairaj good yes sirisha mini mega abhishek devna rishabh 
Anitu Bonus, Gina, Ashina, Prithvi is right. Again, we have the sequence. Pooja, yes, Pooja, right. Yes, Regina. So, I hope I've answered your queries in the process, Regina. You still have any questions? I'll just wait for a few more minutes. We can just hold on. So, uh, to summarize briefly all that we have discussed so far, just give me one second. My charging is very low. Just give me one second. Yeah, you can drop your scores. I'm not going to read out, right? If you feel like uh, you don't want your score to be revealed, I'll not just read it. Drop your score so that you can analyze for yourself, compare it to analysis. Yeah, sure, sure, Regina, you can drop a mail. You still have any queries, right? Yes, Saida is missing today. So your scores, let me just have a look. Yes, good, Prithvi, Ashina, Gina, right. Mega, Rishabh, Neetu. Good, keep it up and see that you minimize your negative score as much as possible. So comparatively, bonding agents have framed relatively easy equations. But we'll definitely have more and more questioning patterns similarly. <laughs> Regina, you have 100. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'll not read it out. Okay, so to summarize all that in brief. See, uh, Abhishek, first of all, I'll try answering your question. We often have this confusion. So we have three components. Acid etching, priming, and conditioning. So first of all, we have these bonding agents. Why do you have these bonding agents? Bonding agents are bonding. They help in bonding the overlying composite or resin to your underlying dentin. These are your bonding agents. So bonding agents have three components, like in the sense, three steps. Acid etching, priming, and adhesive. Why do you need acid etching? To create some kind of porosities. Why do you need this priming? To promote flow of your resin. So primer is a low viscous hydrophilic material which permeates or penetrates into the collagen mesh which is formed as a result of acid etching, right? And why do you have this adhesive resin? So that this adhesive resin binds or forms the micro tags or micro tags and helps in forming micro mechanical bond. That's why you have this acid etching, porosity creation, priming to promote bonding hydrophilic, right? To have better flow and it allows the overlying adhesive resin to form these micro tags and resin tags and also improves the micro mechanical bonding in the process. So leave out the first generation, second their failures, third generation have this concept of hybrid layer as you said as Gina and uh, uh, Sirish rightly said we have these four steps as per the textbook it's later. So from fourth generation, so fourth generation you have three steps acid etching, priming and adhesive application separately. So that's your fourth generation. And remember, before starting this, let me just clarify one thing for you. We have this broad classification of bonding agents as H and ring systems and self edge systems. So H and ring systems are those where you apply an H and rinse it, and then apply primer and bonding agent or adhesive. But in case of your self edge adhesives, you're not etching and rinsing you are having this self edge primers which are incorporated that means primer itself acts as an agent in case of your self edge adhesives sixth generation as well as seventh generation so we'll start with fourth generation as i said we have three steps etching priming and 
address your application. So that is your fourth step. Fourth generation where you have three steps. Fourth generation, three steps, right? That's clear. Fifth generation, two steps. They have simplified the fourth generation by eliminating the three steps or reducing three steps into two steps. Like for example, they have, we have this acetation separate, but primer and NSU are mixed together in a single bottle. So we have only two steps in case of your fifth generation. And remember, both fourth generation and fifth generation, they come under H and RIM systems. And then you have your sixth and seventh generation. You have this uh, sixth and seventh, which are self H uh, adhesives. It means the HM is not applied separately. So we have sixth generation two step, seventh generation single step. Sixth generation two step, it's like you're having self H primer. So the primer and HM are combined together, and then you have an adhesive. And seventh generation, it's all in one single bottle. That's it. You just make a note of these points, just go through the schematic illustrations once again, it will be once and for all very clear. It's a simple concept, but I know it will be confusing initially. But just imagine what you have done in your undergraduation, that itself will give you a lot of confidence. Right? You have done, you might have done some composite illustrations, right? Bonding agent applications, you might have followed fifth generation, right? It should be simple for you to remember that way at least. Yeah, yes, Abhishek. Follow the latest edition. There have been some modifications, right? Do follow the latest edition. So I think I've clarified the concept for you, Abhishek. Right? I hope it's clear. Yes, Ashina, what's the clinical question you have? When we place GIC as a liner in anterior tooth, how can we manage correct shape? GIC, you're saying it as a liner, right? Liner means it's in the millimeters, 0.2 to 0.3 mm, right? So it's not going to affect the shape. Shade selection, customized or shade tabs, shade tab you have prefixed shades or customized shade tab you compare that with the, with that of your instant tools, right? So since it's used as a liner, you will not have any issue and you can manage that. If you think that the GIC can be seen clinically, uh, then what we do is we have these opaque layers. I mean, Densplay, we have this brand, I don't exactly, it's Mono Ceramics or Mono X Ceram. Uh, we have this brand which we use in our post graduation. We have these uh, dentin shades and enamel shades separately. So, dentin shades are, I mean, in the composite, you have A1, E2. Similarly, you'll have dentin shade D1, D2, D3, D4, and enamel shades E1, E2, and E3 in that particular system. So, we used to use this dentin shade to mask off the opacity, if at all, as you said, you have some GAC liner or you feel like the teeth. They, have, uh, they should have this dentin shade, then we used to add it. And on top of that, we used to add this enamel shade to have this natural appearance, right? So that uh, one way you can uh, mask off the opacity of your GAC in case of your anterior restorations. And moreover, GAC used as a liner, it's not going to really impact or influence your aesthetics. And that's my personal take clinically. Yeah, you have these 3D shade guides are different shade guides, but custom shade tab is considered to be more accurate. It means you're trying to uh, see the natural shade which is present there, try to compare what shade the patient has by adding a material of composite customized to that particular tooth. So that's called as custom shade. And this guy is again coming and disturbing me. Right, so that's in brief about different generations. So we have these components and all, it's very simple concept, right? It's very, very simple concept, but we tend to get confused because of the number of terms we have. We have this conditioner, HN, primer, solvent, adhesive, resin. So we get confused, right? So my advice, my sincere advice to all of you is just try to focus on key terms first. Master the key terms. You, we think that it's not significant, but that's going to play a key role. Take my word for granted, master the key terms first, not by hearting them, but try to understand the con but try to understand the term first. And then proceed with the discussion, it will be crystal clear. That's for sure. Right? Yeah, definitely, Prithu. We'll have a separate discussion for composites if possible. Hi, Amna. Yes, we have a separate uh, WhatsApp group. We have a study club. You can drop a mail at proudtobedentist at gmail.com for more details, right? So I hope this session was of some use. I know it's an elaborate session. I know it's challenging to focus and to get the concept right. But since you use this session as a starting point to master dentin bonding agents, right? Yeah.
And by the way, uh, it's already 11.45 and people are still online, surprising. Uh, so tomorrow's discussion will postpone it, right? So I said we'll be having this image-based discussion, right? So I wanted to actually project some images in dental materials and try to have some discussion. I will postpone that, yeah, okay? We'll just have it in the evening time. So tomorrow morning, let's not have any uh, session. So you can just go ahead with your WhatsApp group discussion and maybe you can have tomorrow evening, 7.30 or 9 p.m. I'll let you know through WhatsApp, right? Say good night for everyone, Toffee. Yeah. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. <laughs> yeah, let's not have morning session tomorrow. I'll just post a message again in a mail as well as in a WhatsApp group. So we'll just have a session tomorrow evening, right? Yeah, I uh, wish you a speedy recovery, Mini. And uh, yes, good night, all of you. And see you again tomorrow evening. So, tomorrow morning, let's not have any discussion, right? Yeah. Yes, good night, everyone. Bye. Have a pleasant sleep. Take care. And bye from Toffee as well. Bye. Okay, thank you so much for your wishes, Sairaj, and wish you all the same.